Okay, let's take a look at another one. ROE, rate of return on common stockholders' equity. The numerator almost is very close to ROA. It's almost the same, except that we are subtracting any preferred dividends that we gave out to shareholders. So not each and every company has preferred shares. So some companies do, some companies don't. So in order to be comparable on ROE, oftentimes we just exclude the preferred dividends part. And we also do not consider preferred shares in this ratio. So this ratio is purely about common stockholders' equity. Usually common stockholders' equity is the majority part compared to preferred shares. Preferred shares usually is a lot less than this. Okay, and keep in mind that each and every public traded companies would have common shares, but not necessarily preferred shares. Okay, so this rate of return, we're comparing the return again to common shareholders. That's why we use again net income. Remember in the previous ratio, net income is also <coughs> representing return to shareholders. But this part here, we subtract any preferred dividends. Earlier we were calculating, remember the $6,000? We subtract that part, preferred dividends. So the numerator is the return to specifically common shareholders. And the denominator here is average common stockholders' equity. Again, you see the term average. So you would compare beginning, meaning last year ends, beginning balance sheet equity on common stock. And then this year end, ending common stock equity amount. Then add them together, divided by two. So following previous year's example, we still have 33 million um, net income amount. And assuming preferred dividends is $6 million, we subtract it, divided by average level of common stock equity. So what this means is we're trying to understand the relationship between the return that we gave out to shareholders compared to what they contributed to the company. This part here is the contributed capital from shareholders. Okay, so the average dollar of contributed capital to shareholders, how much of it actually turns into the return to them. Now the rule of thumb for this ratio is about 15% and higher. Again, the higher the better because numerator is the return amount. <clears throat> so just like ROA, the higher the better if you compare across the industry, compare across the same years, the different years in the same company. 15% and above will be considered using the contributed capital pretty well. So again, if we use this measure to evaluate this example, the strong or weak? Weak, right? Because this, this example, again, a dollar of common shares contributed capital, it only turns into about uh, $0.09. So it's relatively speaking, this is a 9% rate of return on equity. It's lower than the rule of thumb, 15%. Okay, so this is ROA. Then ROE, we have an income minus preferred dividends divided by average common stock equity. 